Um, what I brought today is almond honey crisps with candied lemon and honey cream. Now I have to admit the honey is not from the local area. Um, this is actually from Napa Valley, it's an organic honey. I happen to be in California a few months ago and I picked this up. But most of the farmers markets I've been to have local grown honey. In fact, there's a little the road that we take, the back road that we take, when we come from here to teach and go over to Woodstock North, I think it's uh, Fleming. Um, there's a little farm that says honey for sale. So honey obviously can be done anywhere. Anywhere you have honey, you can get honey. So it's one, something local that you can definitely use. Lemon's not necessarily local, but you can even find organic lemons in the area. I will tell you something between organic lemons and regular lemons. Does, any, does everyone know to boil your lemons before you use them? Has anyone heard of this? No. Even when it's organic, there is an organic food wax. If you're not sure, boil them. Boil them in water for just a few minutes, and you'd be amazed. As soon as you start to smell that smell, you know the wax has dissipated, and then you can use them. You'd be amazed if you're resisting a lemon, especially putting it in something sweet where you're not cooking it. You'd be amazed at the difference of a made for you that. Let's just shift a little for you guys. Okay, I'm getting sweaty here. <laughs> should, have, should have gotten some service there. Yeah, that's down the class in the Bye. So I hope I, I, I hope nobody uh, started baking stuff up for the house. And I hope everybody gets something. As you can see, this is literally everything I have, so I hope everything got something. You need more spoons? But now, uh, I know you probably got me already, which is okay. So most of these beans, most of these beans, you might have seen pictures, or you have cooked with them. The awesome thing is that they all come kind of with their own flavor profile. But there's really not a good way to explain this than just try them. They cook differently, some soak more, some cook longer. Uh, one thing you might want to uh, remember, there's an emergency cooking method for beans. So if you completely forgot about it tomorrow morning and or tomorrow at lunch and you say, oh, I really want to, oh, what's that? <laughs> um, yeah, it's good. If you see this tomorrow at lunch and you think, oh, I feel like beans, but I forgot the soap, and that's not a big deal. You can actually take dry beans and start the boiling process in a pot. As soon as the liquid comes to a boil with the beans, you put a lid on top and you turn the heat down, you just let them simmer in there. About 45 minutes later, these beans should be ready to, to work with. Means you can make salads out of them or you can, you can do other applications with them. Just not refrying them. I mean, we're trying to stay on the healthy side. Um, now let's look at, at some of your uh, recipes you have there. Uh, did anybody taste anything Asian? Yeah. A little bit of sesame seeds, soy sauce. Okay, now, again, locally grown beans, Asian style. Okay? <laughs> um, did anybody taste a little heat in some of the beans? Some of the beans, two beans actually were um, soaked in a vegetable stock infused with lime juice and jalapenos. So I don't need to add any pepper, I don't need to add any garlic later on, I can actually do this directly to the beans. Cool. If you have tasted wine, uh, white wine or red wine, uh, bay leaf, rosemary, all these things we put in, uh, in different beans. So, I have to remember which one is which, right? The Parisian beans, these were the beans, they were like grayish in color stripes. These were actually just soaked in a vegetable stock. Uh, the butter beans, these were the flat ones, uh, with uh, the scallions, the green onions, the carrots, and the basil. These were actually soaked in jalapenos. So the flat beans, they're very mealy. If you tasted those and they had some heat, that's because they were soaked in vegetable stock with jalapenos. So you can actually already use a lot of the flavors already in the cooking liquid or in the soaking liquid. They, they doubled up in size, that was crazy. I mean, I put probably a quart of water in there, a liquid in there was nothing left and when I came in today in the morning. I'm like, oh, somebody's drinking out of my bean mix there. <laughs> the Calypso beans, which is lovely, uh, just call them the Orca beans or the Kilo beans. Yeah, because they look like, somebody still has that glass thing. They look 
look at the beans, they're like white and black, they look like uh, killer whales or orcas. <laughs> that was also infused in jalapeno uh, vegetable stock. Uh, that had a little lime juice and cilantro. So that was a little bit Hispanic take on. Again, a bean which is grown here locally, turned into a little bit more diverse food, a little bit more ethnic, ethnic flavor, which is very important that you understand you can't use produce which is grown here and make pretty much anything out of it. You can go Indian, you can go uh, Mexican, you can go Austrian. <laughs> that would be a problem with a lot of bacon, alcohol, schnapps, schnapps, schnapps. <laughs> black Valentine's beans, those were the complete dark uh, black beans, a little bit on the smaller side. These were actually uh, soaked uh, overnight in white wine and a little bit of rosemary. So if you chew on that bean in particular, it should be a little bit uh, one, uh, a, a, a subtle flavor of rosemary. And uh, my favorite actually was the Hidatsu Shield. Uh, that bean grew really, really big. It uh, is like half white and then uh, there's like flakes on it. Somebody put uh, right here. I don't know if I can see that. But these beans uh, grew also 50% more. So they, they grew very large. Uh, and they took on a lot of flavor. That was actually vegetable stock. When you find those beans, I thought that I taste all vegetables which were in the stock, all your carrots, you know, Yes. What did you say about this one? That was the uh, Hidatsa Shield. Did I say that right? Yeah, Hidatsa Shield. Hidatsa Shield. Now, Beth, how long, how long did they grow? Like, how long does it take to grow them? Um, that particular variety I can't recall exactly, but usually they're done by late August. Some, some varieties start in early August, some of them go to late August. That's about right. And some in September. And some in September. Um, I think the best variety, the, the large varieties of these kind of beans are available from Vermont Bean Company. They have a great selection. I think that's why they're called a bean company. <laughs> but that's, they have, you can go online, I think it's Vermont Bean, and they'll be happy to send you a catalog every week for the rest of your life. <laughs> so um, if you are interested in growing beans, they're, they're actually pretty easy to do. One thing that you have to, to watch for, though, is some of them have do what's called shattering, which means as the pod dries, it splits. So you have to kind of watch them. I usually, when they start to turn a little brown, I usually pick them and, and spread them out on trays and, and cover them with something so they don't explode all over. But not all of them do that. So. Have you ever used them for a speed application? Any beans? The only two I've ever used are the, the red the, the tofu, tofu, or the tofu beans and the uh, butter beans. You can use butter beans similar to chestnuts. They're not as sweet, but the protein content is very nice. So if you're looking for a healthier way, if you have a recipe with chestnuts, try uh, smashed butter beans. Or if you don't like the red bean paste ice cream, I love red bean paste ice cream. But you can use um, kidney beans in, the, in that place. They're not nearly as sweet, but you can use them in speed application. Um, the, uh, the softer beans, you can chop up very small and you can candy them. You them in cakes. Those are the, the few ways that I've done it. Sweet, but it's a nice way to get some protein into yeah, some amounts of sugar. The, the butter bean ones actually, we did put a little local honey in the too when we, when we made the dressing. So they were maybe a little bit on the sweet side. Just want to let you know a little bit about how to get to those produ products if you don't want to grow them yourself. Uh, local farmers markets are, are growing, God bless. Um, just a couple of facts because I just got educated in that. Woodstock right now, Woodstock's farmers market is right now voted the number one <coughs> farmers market in Illinois. And that's right at our doorstep. So I mean that's our fault if we don't go there. I mean obviously Illinois people have voted for that one. It's the fourth, it's on it's number forty one in the nation. Nation. Number forty one nation. Um and it's a produce only farm a farmer's market. That means everybody who goes and sells stuff there actually produces it. So how cool is that? If I have a question about something, I can talk to the guy and the girl right there and I know exactly how it's grown, which soil they use, do they use pesticides or not, or do they have a fox, I uh, mean a cat or a dog there chasing the animals away or whatever. Um, 